Blue side, uh, they ha are willing to ban uh, high loss on the blue side. Hilt as well. Nepal has played Khalid and they played that up against uh, uh, Mongolia, rather. That may have been one of the picks that uh, gave Mongolia some trouble, and that's why Cambodia are taking it out. So we're looking at the Matilda. Matilda, high loss, Hilda, I feel like uh, might be the bands that they Chip have their eyes set on. Jushin. Oh, Jushin as well. Uh, one of those heroes that you mentioned will be led through. Unless Cambodia pull off a surprise move and actually don't give the chip. Aurora. Oh, oh they're, oh, they're respecting Nabi from earlier. Remember, it was the Aurora and the Edith of Nabi and the UA respectively that gave problems to uh, to Cambodia. Oh, but this yeah. means that the Yves should be let open, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Problems to Mongolia. Yeah, so... Eve is going to be open. Vexana, Valentina are up in the mid. So that means Nepal might be looking to rush or prioritize a high loss if it's available for them. But it's a good first two picks for Cambodia. Or they could be looking into rushing the alpha. Uh, hence why they're deciding to ban out the Aurora. Other than respect. I think that's I think that's valid, right? I think that's valid. Uh, force the Gami on a, an assassin. And just play the macro game, right? Play yeah. the objective game. Take it one step at a time in the early portion and try to out pressure the pressure that an assassin can have. I mean, we've yeah. seen the assassins work really difficult against things like the Faramis. Maybe that's something that they can also consider when it comes down to it to deny the Ooh. kill pressure coming in from the Gummy. Spicy, yeah. But it looks like the Sicilian is going to be banned out here from <laughs> Cambodia. These, there are going to be huge top prio picks that are going to be left open here. Yeah. For Edmar. They're both respecting each other in terms of the bands and picks. Now it's Jushin. So it's a big trade of if ever. Again, it's not always we've seen the chip. There have been teams who just completely forgo the chip. If ever, chip might show up as red 3 or blue 2 3. Maybe even red 4 if it's still going to be open. So, last band, are they going to just go into the Alpha Suyo trade? Oh, is the battle of the Jushin? I'm feeling like it might be a surprise high loss rush for Nepal because Cambodia can only get one of the other. If ever Alpha or Soyo is not banned here, Nepal can pick up the high loss and then just pick up what's left of the Alpha or the Suyo. Would you pick Alpha or would you pick Suyo? Uh, at this point, I would rather see my high loss paired up with an Alpha. But if the Suyo is what's left for Nepal later, if ever that's the route that they're going to be going for, why not? All right, it looks like Chip is going to be left open, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. again. Jake, right, I think one of the wow. matches we saw the Chip being banned out in the second phase instead, so it was completely ignored. I'm not really sure whether or not the Chip is actually in the mix when it comes down to the hero pools for both of these teams. But if it is, it might be first picked here unless they, like Reptar, Renmar, Reptar, Renmar man, mentioned earlier Thanks. on the Suyo and the Alpha trade. Yeah, I love Suyo, Alpha, Chip. Mobius is also still open. And Nepal's like weighing all their options right now. They know they cannot get this first pick wrong. So they go ahead and rush the Alpha. So for their Cambodia, instead of getting the high loss, they might consider getting the Gatot Kacha. But again, I believe in a strong defense around the mid. I'd rather get high loss now, as the Aurora's not going to be available for you. Might be susceptible. So you go high loss Suyo or. High loss and... Uh, I think you can leave Suyo for later. Yeah, because yeah, I can go red three for sure. Oh, they go for the Gatot Kacha instead. I mean, they can try to get both the high loss and Gatot Kacha. They might even consider getting a mid laner because uh, really right now I'm just looking at the, the invade uh, possibility of Nepal if they get high loss and alpha. So they get the Vexana. Not going to be as clear cut in terms of defending. Just a lot of pressure now on Kanabi to get the, the Terrifice and the Eternal Guards when she hits level fours correctly. For sure, but it's also a really good, uh, uh, I would say, passive counter, soft counter. If even Nepal want to go for the high looks here. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's soft. Like, uh, you have the Terrify now. So, I think it's confirmed that Nepal love to play around the Melissa. That might be their main pick. And that's one of the reasons. And of course, uh, high loss does go into Nepal's lineup, uh, paired up with the Alpha, as we've been pushing for. So for Cambodia, are you now going to get a gold leader that might surprise uh, this Melissa? Hmm. They need a little bit uh, stronger damage output. Okay, Hayabusa. Hayabusa got the Kacha. If 
for a good amount of militias might be a little bit worried to go up against that but Vexana wanting to get a little bit close yeah it's the gold lane matchup now that's so dire for Cambodia I have a question about interaction though here mm -hmm. with the go away that is available for the Melissa does that protect against shadow kill as well as the avatar of the guardian I oh, know I mean once a shadow kill is locked in you're still gonna get shadow shadow killed inside what about the avatar, avatar of guardian you're gonna get hit but the moment the Gatan Kacha lands he gets pushed out Ah. So he won't be able to do that thing, taunt, the enhanced basic attacks or whatnot, but he'll be able to dive in and deal the damage. Uh, some some Melissa's that I've uh, seen use that up against a Gata Kacha, that's why uh, in your server, I find myself in the Indonesia <laughs> server playing there when I'm paired up with the Melissa I usually played with, uh, does not like a Gata Kacha full magic damage build because the Avatar of Guardian will still hit. Okay. So the initial damage hits, but there is a layer of protection from the... Yeah. Aftermath. Yeah, from the aftermath, because okay. you get pushed out right away. So the Edith gets banned here by Cambodia. But my big question is how else are they going to try and protect this Melissa? They've locked in the high lows. Do they need some more degree of crowd control in their mix? Oh, of course. I, I wouldn't want to see them go for a greedy mid laner. Uh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, they can actually go high loss EXP and then Carmilla Rome. Uh, so they'll have a Carmilla and another mage in the mid. Distribute that damage. So it's going to be Carmilla Alpha. They can even go... Uh, no, with the Sicilian blocked out. Oh, no, I'm leaning a bit more towards Tig. Tig real and uh, strong Percy high control mid for, for Nepal. Makes sense. It makes sense. We'll see whether or not it pops out. But for the moment, we do see the Hilda being banned up by Cambodia. It makes sense. They want to be able to protect the Hayabusa. They want him to be able to have a good farming pattern in the early portion of the game, seeing as how we've seen the Hilda become one of the main ways to shut down an assassin. We've seen Tagami when she's given space, and so Tagami's space, they will try to give. Nepal, on the other hand, with the 1-1 ban, is the 1-1 a good lane against the Melissa? Is that why it gets banned out alongside with the Claude? Should be able to get out of the Mundus range uh, relatively well. Uh, I still feel like a good aggressive Melissa will be able to temper what the 1-1 one -one wants to do in terms of avoiding her. Uh, but at the same time, I think they're going to be playing slow from the front. Also, one of the reasons why they took away the 1-1. One -one. I have a very crazy suggestion for Nepal if they're willing to play into it. Uh, it might mean a quick snowball, but hey, if you want your damage distributed well, you can go with it. Carmilla's Cyclops. Okay. You already have a good source of crowd control from the Carmilla and the Alpha together. The Cyclops will lock one down. In the late game, the damage distributed by the Curse of Blood plus a star, ma a star magic, uh, star power lockdown. I don't think it's out of the question. Yeah. We've seen even Team Indonesia pick up the Cyclops in the yeah. mid lane, right? Again, it's, a cra it's just a crazy suggestion. If they default into Valentina, I wouldn't mind. Uh, Valentina Tig, if it's going to be. Carmilla, then you go for the big bursty type uh, of mage. And it would make sense, right? Valentina has a lot to take away from, right? We have the yeah. Terizla, you have the Vexana, you have the... Whoa, oh, whoa, 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 okay. whoa, 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 there. We have the Lilia as well as the Yuzong, I believe. <laughs> I do not remember the last time I casted the black dragon form of the Yuzong. Uh, okay. So they get the Petrify. I think that's what they're looking for. Another layer of crowd control. Dueling, I believe. She's confident to duel up against the Terizla. Uh, gold in for Cambodia here. Needs something with reach. Uh, the tough thing is you can't go Leslie. You cannot uh, carry. Might be a bit tough. You need to maximize the dash. Are they just going to... Are you going to default into Hearth? No. You have the Lilia Melissa to deal with. Try to pull off a Beatrix. But then again... Just think about the Petrify and then the presence of all the shadow energy on the floor. Bruno, I mean, damn. I, I get it, but at the same time, oof. I guess they're going back to comfort for Yui Fendi. Yeah, could be Yui Fendi. I, they could have probably just went for, hey, Yui Fendi, uh, what do you want to pick? Uh, do you want to just pick up your best hero that could potentially win up against a Melissa? And you said, okay, just give me the Bruno. I feel like there's a player call already at that point to say uh, confident in that matchup. Yeah, because even in the previous bout that we saw with Saudi Arabia, the Moscow pick was a little bit iffy, but it turns yeah. out it was a power pick and she was able to perform on it. So it, it's it's still a wild card. It still might work uh -huh. considering 
But as a whole, we haven't seen Yuzong in quite some time. How do you think it's going to work out? Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why Yuzong fell off is with all of the damage available. But right now, I feel like they might be able to answer it. But I, my mind goes back to the whole petrified combination. Is it going to be enough is my biggest question. So we may throw that question over to our casters. So Mirko, Naisu, take us away for the next game. That's me catching it. That's me catching the question. Heading on over here. Thank you guys, Eterna Renmar, for breaking down our drafts here. Yes, once again, me and Iso with Mirko, and we're down to match number five for the day. Again, last day of groups, we're going through group B, and this is going to be interesting, man, because Cambodia's lineup is obviously, it's really good. Yep. You have the Hayabusa for that scaling and everything else, and I think they cover their bases really well. The great thing about it is who they're against. Five Nepal's lineup is not something you see technically Smash every them. single day. I mean, it, oh, it has yeah. been a minute, Mirko, since we've seen the old Yuzhang come through. The staple pick before for the XB lane is now rocking that Warcry Emblem and the Petrify. How do you feel about this? I don't know, like you said, man, it's we haven't seen the Black Dragon in the Land of Dawn for such a long time, so I guess we'll just have to see with this game, right? If Nino can actually do it, can do well for Nepal here on the Yuzong, but there's something else that hasn't really been too common, the Melissa pick. Oh, yeah? It's been, I would say, a really good way to actually stop the Harrod uh, in the lane itself, but in a lot of these skirmishes, because she's very reliant on Inspire and very reliant on, like, the single burst, technically, while you have that duration on Inspire on, it hasn't really been too prior. Uh, in more of the burst metas, I think the Melissas have been able to get more value. But here, yeah. Yui Fendi actually decided to go for the Bruno against the Melissa. And based on my personal experience, it is still actually favorable for the Melissa. If it's a 1v1 in this lane, 50-50, uh, it's still, uh, you know, a uh, Melissa win. I would have definitely thought, you know, something like a Moskov or a Claude could be the better answer towards the Melissa here in the lane itself. Something with a blink to just get away from the models. Yeah. But technically, Bruno has a way to deal with it. It's just, you need to, sli you need to you slide tackle when she uses first skill. Yeah. You can't use the slide tackle before first skill because then you can just, you know. Then you're uh, stuck. You can just move the models to where you want it to yeah. be. Yeah. I guess that's why you have the purify. You yeah. know, maybe that helps a little bit, but. Um, you know, it's part of it, too, where the panel was like, maybe it's also just some of the comfort. Yui Fendi, obviously, previously playing this Bruno here. One thing that I do notice, too, is Nepal's lineup should be able to do quite a bit of damage early on, just because even so with double Warcry Emblem, now I know, you know, mini control is not going to be there on the Melissa early on for all these fights, but later on, especially when you go in and the really, when Yuzhong was just prominent for so long, Part of it was just, you go in, you get the Furious Dive off, you get a stun, you get a Petrify, and then that sets things up so well. Now imagine, you can do that even easier now that you have a Glorious Pathway with you. You could be able to land the Spear of Alpha a little bit easier too here for Mau Mau, but they're going to start up the Turtle. We'll see if Cambodia can actually get in position for this. They're trying to find that window to actually initiate this Tagami on the... Back side. No penalty zone and the retribution comes in. A good Petrify and a Furious Dive catches Tagami and she's going to be forced to go with the Quad Shadow into the back again. Glorious Pathway disengaging for Nepal and they're able to get the win on the first turtle. This is the power, Mirko, of Revitalize. You know, this is why every single game that we see in right now in the current meta, you, you, you almost essentially have a one Revitalize for each side, but there has been instances where you have double, right? And a lot of the times, you see these little first fights break out, these first skirmishes or team fights, and really it's who's able to go ahead and get that proper revitalize and, and heal the multiple members that they're looking for. Now, part of that layering, too, is the fact that, you know, you have black shoes here to be able to play into. And we know, you know, Lilia hasn't popped up too often either, and I think she's still one of those maybe underrated heroes, right? Do you actually surprised at how much damage she can do? And then even so, when you're clumped up, around the Revitalize, you're trying to play around that, or the Avatar of the Guardian, you almost have free range to just go ahead and, and pop off the blooms. What happens when she gets the Ice Queen wand? You know, it's that yep. even more difficult to go ahead and fight against. It's gonna be really, really tough, and you can already see how it's difficult for this Bruno to win out in the lane here with the Muddle Control. I think if it's just pure laning, Melissa has got to be one of the best heroes to sit there in the gold lane and win out the skirmish. So if you actually are looking for a weak side pick in the gold lane, that will certainly get you some dubs in the skirmishes and can actually even hold up 1v2. Go for the Melissa. It's a really underrated pick right now. And you can see in the mid lane too, I don't know. It seems like Cambodia have a lot of tempo on the map, but they just don't know what they are going to use it on, right? Because right now there's no neutral objective. And unfortunately for both these compositions, 
they're kind of built for neutral objectives. The thing is, if we talk about scaling game, if the game is truly this slow, we're probably looking at like a 15, 60 yeah. day game. Yeah. Early this is going to be a beast. That's true. You know, and, you know, we've seen so much of this uh, just because of the fact that we haven't seen Melissa too much. Do you think she still goes Malefic Gun? Like, is this still a... Mm, you know, that's a good question. Is, because she already has an advantage technically with the models yeah. with range, right? So then how does that work if you do end up locking in a Malefic Gun? Because so far, I would say the majority of the gold laners that we've seen, they actually pick it up. You know, the timing might be different, but essentially they've all picked it up. Second turtle of the game is going to be the focus right now. Also, Takami relying on the front the the front line that they have here. Even the penalty zone can be enough to start things up. Well, right now, just a reset happening. Early dragon form going to be used. So that's burned out. They're going to go for it. The Takami for Takami right now. Let's see if the taunt is going to be there in time. And that's with the Spear of Alpha still Takami. We're going to have the Red battle going back to Quad Shadow. They're all going to be clumped up together as Uwe is unable to get the big taunt. We'll charge it up again. It's just a neutral objective take. No kill on the board. And Ondantato will still be able to escape. Man, 0-0 zero, zero in the first five minutes. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, man. It's those revitalizes. We've seen so many good oh. setups. Good flicker defensively. So Navi's gonna be fine, but it's just, oh, hold on, this might be a kill here. Yeah, Moshi will be able to escape. not enough. Not enough just yet. They're still going to be able to clear out the waves. And yeah, I guess we we'll, can take a look at the items here. It's a 600 gold lead actually for Melissa on the way to a Golden Staff second item. This is a little uncanny. You know, for all the games that we've had on the stream so far for ISF, I can't even recall, even back for the MLBB Open Men's, that we've had six minutes, no kills. You know, it's, yeah. This is uh, one of the games, like very you said, where based. yeah, very objective base, and it seems to be that way. And also, it's not so that much that they're not trying to fight or trying to get the kills. It's just revitalized. Honestly, the revitalize <laughs> has been it. I wish we had a you know total healing meter because I'm sure you know it almost be relatively even between the two revitalizes here for both sides. You can see that too. Good gold farming happening here, like we've mentioned for mini control, just to go ahead and kind of keep that lane in the advantage in the gold. Mm. So that's already looking pretty much of a threat. Yeah, big, big threat. AOG forced out. Revitalized too for Ondatato. An interesting revitalized. Doesn't look like we're too far uh -oh. low of HP. Now muddle placement into the back Whoa. with the Spear of Alpha 2. With no Avatar of Guardian will be taken down. First blood already. Six minutes in and that's two on the board. Yui Fendi falling as well. In the mid lane, a trade possible for Cambodia. But they're already on the way to the mid lane. I don't think they'll be able to take oh. this down. Penalty zone to lock Nino down. It's also the Eternal Guard and the Curse Blast to take her down. But again, big resources utilized here. A turret up top falling for Nepal to take. It's traded with the bottom lane as Sagami has picked up another. This is where you're showcasing some of that experience that this team from Cambodia obviously has, the shot calling that's being made. Even when you have that exchange happen on the top side, Tagami's able to push that tier one in. They get a pick off kill in the jungle, and now they get an objective, right? Second turtle for them in favor. So one to two in turtles. Cambodia gets a small advantage, but Nepal's fighting. Like they are really showing that they're willing to go in and fight. And I think they really are leaning hard into the fact that yes, they have this Melissa. And when that Inspire is ready to go and unleash, their their fighting potential is going to be great. I mean, even earlier on, you know, Spear of Alpha is enough to go ahead and catch someone if they have to. But I think Cambodia also has to be very cautious on the timing of the Revitalize. This is such a major part in their lineup, in their idea and strategy in taking this game. So very small leads that we're looking at here. Eight minutes in, this is going to make it for a very interesting lore. Probably the most, you know, just slow buildup that we've seen up to the first Lord for the for the most part, at least here for WC 2024. And I don't know, man, when you're looking at how things can fall into place with both team fights. It's really just that execution. Both teams have so many tools to initiate or disengage. But I feel like if Cambodia doesn't lock down mini control, they're gonna get, they're gonna have a really tough time with that fight. If you don't lock down mini control, you're gonna lose control, right? Huh. Goes with it here. And I agree with you, man, especially considering mini control is actually on the way to get that power spike relatively early in the game. Usually we would expect for a Melissa to get it like by 10 minutes, 11 minutes even. Yeah. She should be actually getting it around nine minutes here considering she's just 
ahead of the curve when it comes to farm, a level ahead of Yui Fendi. He's actually positioning for a possible ambush on Datato, very, very low, does have to revitalize still. The first blast comes in as well. Moshi is looking for the penalty zone. The OG connects and also the penalty zone there. Mindy control will be taken down wow. under that turret. The curse blast into the go away will be able to penetrate it down. Petrified offensively, Moshi still swinging a hammer down as Nino Echo is trying to desperately to get some space for coffee to escape. Uwe will just sew him away. Lord will be spawning in the game, and it so, does look like Cambodia won't be rushing towards the Lord. They're just gonna go for the turret first. Looks like Tagami might start it up, but obviously two Nepal team members still around the corner. So all that, you know, for that tier one turret on the top side, but you saw that that was the plan, Mirko, right? Just yep. get mini control out of the, the picture and you're okay. They lose so much damage when Nepal loses mini control. So with that, they'll get in position. They played the map to their favor, Cambodia, working around the fact that tier one turrets down the bottom, they might force a fight here. Early penalty zone, but also the glorious pathway. So it's a battle of resources, a trade of big ultimates. Both of them just hovering over the Lord, trying to go for that Lord dance. They go for the Lord dance, they're gonna keep it up. It's gonna reset, they know they're down some crucial resources too. Penalty zone still waiting here for Moshi. Once Moshi has that, they've got a couple options. How Cambodia wants to approach the fight. They'll keep things cleared the best they can, but even so, you know, you're still looking at the fact that both roamers have that revitalized, trying to fight for control around this Lord pit. This is a great picture of how this entire game has gone for the past almost 11 minutes. There's the jump in. Leo G from Uwe, it's still on a mile out, you can see that shred coming down, terrifying, Eternal Guard at the penalty zone from Moshi, locks three members down, it's fine with the goal away, Tagami unable to get the shadow kill into them all, but now it's stunned oh. up, the damage won't be enough just yet, mini control will pick up the win of nature, you can see the health bars of Cambodia, very, very low, mini control and coffee still surviving, and Cambodia seems like they're still gonna go for the Lord despite having this very low HP bar on Tagami. She might be enough of a threat, I don't know, to stop this. She should be zoned out though by Yui Fendi. Oh. Yui Fendi? Even with the nature, Yui Fendi just solo kills her there. I think a bit of help from Nabi with the Curse Blast earlier, but Mini Control's got to understand that without the Inspire, yeah. she's not really that big of a threat. Not that big of a threat. I was thinking, you know, if she would have been able to plant up at least with coffee there, then maybe they would have delayed the Lord, but unfortunately they just get taken out and now Cambodia. Momentum in their favor, waiting for that Lord to come up. They're gonna be focusing on this tier two. They'll Worldly. clear out what they can. Look at that Worldly just pow pow. World are bouncing over to these members of the Lord, man. Taken again, Cambodia. I really just won out the objective game. We were talking about how slow the game was going, and obviously if you can get the objectives in a very slow game, this lead will still build up, and it's actually more dangerous than a active game, a very aggressive yeah. game. Because there are no shutdowns to be claimed here for the side of the fall. There's a, only a shutdown for Nabi. It's a very hard target to actually go for. Uh, and Moshi's just zoning Mao Mao. Wait, actually, this might be a kill. No. Oh. Spear of Alpha defensively. It's a tier two down below. A tier two up top taken by the Lord as well. They're going to work on this mid lane tier two. That's a crucial thing. Even if you can go ahead and just burn out an ult, burn out a battle spell before the Lord makes it to the base, it's going to give you that minor advantage. And that's what Cambodia looks to do. Tier one, finally, the mid lane goes down. Slowly, Tagami was walking in with that Lord. And now the eyes set on the base turrets here. Taking quite a few shots, still being worked on uh, all fronts. That top turret looks like it might go down. Tagami. Oh, in the bottom lane just wow. assassinated. The world is still just bouncing on them. They're still grouping up. Two base turrets taken down. Cambodia are just assassinating, splitting them up. I think that's maybe that's all they get. You know, Nino Echo is going to be up in about 15. They still have that wave pushing in mid, so they might look to fully expose the base at least, unless oh, man. Cambodia plans to end the game here. It's all gonna drop mini, down the defense. All on mini control, Ooh. AOG coming down as well. Mao Mao gonna be caught, still able to sustain just a bit from the minion waves. Yui Fendi free hitting them, Kalfi very, very low. Now mini control jumps Whoa. in with the Inspire, and you can see that first damage, and she pops into one of nature to survive. Mao Mao still clearing the waves, they're able to survive now. Very late DHS. I think it's because she had to go for the Wind of Nature. Yeah. At this point, three base turrets down, Naisu. It's three. bleak. It's bleak right now. And that, yep, as you're looking at it, there's the item check. You know, you have Golden Staff, Crows and Scythe, and Did the she DHS. Wind of Nature? I, she pretty sure she sold it because she bought it earlier on for that fight. And then once it procs, oh, she no. sold it out. So it looks like she's going Rose Gold next. But man, this is, you know, you're delayed. 
and you're falling behind further, you can see that. She is the biggest damage dealer by a long shot for Nepal. And when that expire is available, you can see it, right? You get a really good preview of how Cambodia has to be very cautious when mini control is in control. And every single time that inspire is available, you have that kind of smoking gun, if you will, and you're actually able to contest. I'm wondering if Nepal actually wants to go ahead and contest this Lord. They are going to get the information, but this is going to be started up so fast because Mau Mau's still on the bottom side. So what we might be seeing is Nepal just making the decision, you know what, guys, let's go ahead. Let's form up in the base, clear what we can. We still have good damage available to us. Again, they have a Lilia. We know Lilia can clear ways pretty well, but part of it still is how well can they defend with their backs against the wall? Because right exactly. now this is a massive lead for Cambodia. They'll try to catch up to what they can, but they don't have that much time as Lord will now make the way down the mid. This is a big pickup too for Nabi. Nabi's plan here with the Winter Crown is probably just to go ahead and drop the Eternal Guard, flicker forward, get a stun if they can, and then just kind of be that sacrifice where they're gonna focus here. Finally, the Rose Gold is picked up. Lord makes its way into the base. We'll see if Nepal can have a defense. Already taking a couple shots here. All right, Hilo's very low. Mau Mau already taken very low too there. The world did not use just yet. The Black Dragon form already with a penalty zone. Locking them oh. down in the back as well. It's Mini Control who will fall. And Yui Bentley is just wreaking havoc. This defense will not happen for Nepal. It'll be Cambodia to take the game in the 15th minute. It was a long shot for Nepal to be able to defend against that, that kind of deficit they were working against. Items locked in, great synergy coming out from Cambodia, especially the back-to-back -back games that they've showed us here. And really, I was hoping, you know, I was hoping that Melissa would be able to pop off to get that defense going, but man, it just was too difficult, especially with how much initiation came through from Cambodia's lineup here. A few misinputs definitely there with the Wind of Nature also just sold the later stage of the game, you know, I don't know what that, what that was. I think maybe wanting to get the DHS, but obviously selling it away.